All right, I'm back just in time with a fistful of cheese. It's let's go. <laughs> All right, early bloodshot. Marcy getting getting a good teleport for this fight. And uh, we got uh, Transmog on 1-2 for like hope, grabbing the gold longsword. Weapon Transmogs this early on tend to be a little shaky. Can't really reliably get uh, good results on the weapon, but sometimes, sometimes you randomly get something like, uh, oh, that's, yeah, gotta be careful about positioning like that with a longsword. Lake Hope getting snagged there in that hallway. Thankfully, I think just a white skeleton above the Minotaur. Not really hitting them for much damage. That is a nice uh, current shuffle for Marcy there. Lake up with a little bit of a distance advantage, but Marcy with a much better build with the uh, lead boots, the chain mail, current shovel. Like Marsha's build's looking pretty solid. And there's sled boots for Lake Hope as well, getting it through the uh, chest there instead of the transmog. Which means we're going to see a different item here for Marcy, and we do in fact see an infernal torch. Nice gold kill. I hope to see at least a little bit of Infernal Torch value in this run. Oh, and Lake Hope. Not quite sure what their angle is, uh, what they're trying for on this core rift fight. Kind of just walking into the water and getting real tangled up there. Marcy, though, comparatively, having a very easy throw bomb and quick kill. I'm going to be picking up that Obsidian Spear. And this build is looking massively in Marcy's favor at the moment. Looking at a nearly fully decked out um, Obsidian Spear build versus a Gold Longsword. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> I said Lake Hope is... Kind of doing a good job working with what they've got and making a, for a fairly good push here. Trying to keep some sort of lead, but Marcy has closed up. And we're going to see this uh, three damage spear do so much work compared to the uh, one damage longsword. Infernal Torch Fireball coming out. Don't know that it hit anything, but uh, I always love to see it. Easy blood drum throw kill on death metal here for Marcy. Marcy's health looking a little sketchy though, down to one heart. But not as sketchy as Lake Hope, who despite having more health, is actually more vulnerable because of the lack of armor. Oh no, Marcy! Oh, good save from Marcy there. Blood drum to break the ice. Although unfortunately they are down to half a heart after that. Definitely interested in this red chest and this crate here. There's some cookies. Marcy getting bailed. And now in a much more comfortable position. And it looks like just wants to push here. Gonna skip on the crate and the shop here and just push for this exit. Lake Hope, meanwhile, has swapped over to a Blood Rapier and Ring of Piercing build. Gonna be picking up some Obsidian Armor as well. So Lake Hope's build starting to shake up. Starting to shape up quite, uh, quite nicely. Gonna bomb this corner and maybe go for a shovel conjure? Or looking for better armor? No, okay. Headgear. Blast Helm. I say it a lot, but I think Blast Helm is the best headgear in the game. It's very strong. 
But is this go is all this equipment that Lake Hope's managed to pick up going to be enough for them to close the gap with Marcy? We are still talking about a full one zone difference at this point with 3-1 versus 4-1. And that Blood Rapier, while a lot better than the one damage gold longsword, and that piercing also is nice, uh, it's still a low damage weapon at the end of the day. And I, I'm not sure it's going to be able to push hard enough, but we will see what happens here. Marcy going up to plate armor, combined with that helm, has quite the, uh, quite the tanky setup. But this blue dragon is... Okay, yeah, nice use of the blood drum once again. That blue dragon was at a spicy angle there. Gonna be difficult to fight that on fair terms, so... Gotta fight it on unfair terms. Bust out the bust out the blood drum. Okay, there's an urn for Marcy. And a potion? Alright. Marcy's survival, uh, survival looking pretty strong. Gonna stick with the spear over the longsword. I guess for the ability to throw... I don't really care much for it, but um, the throw, the uh, blood drum throw has been serving them well on boss fights so far. Going to be bombing the Shrine of Rhythm for the heart transplant to try and get a little bit of extra speed out of this. And maintaining that full one zone lead. And Lake Hope's still kind of doing some farming, checking the 3-3 checking the three -three shop. I don't know that that's, uh, that's time they have at this point. Oh, and Lake Hope! I'm not sure, I think they were maybe going for an Earth Kill? But even then, if you're going for an Earth Kill, you want to do that in the top left corner. Pushing up the center with a low damage rapier like that is just going to result in something like that. So, unfortunate death for Lake Hope, and with Marcy making it through Zone 4 pretty unscathed, um, this is looking pretty over at this point. Marcy just needs to make it through the end game, avoid any Dead Ringer dunks, and uh, they'll be enjoying a nice clean win here. Starting zone five. And yeah, Marcy's still checking all the all the secret shops and, and such. I think it's the right play to make at this stage. Um, with a dead opponent and a massive lead like this. Yeah, go ahead and pick up that ring of war and the map. Get it get yourself a little bit of uh, extra damage output, make it easy to find the exit. That front torch is perfectly that 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 wall torch is perfectly lined up for the exit, please. I want to see. I want to see the Infernal Torch value. The people demand Infernal Torch value. The people demand Infernal Torch value! No! Infernal Torch value denied. <laughs> it's okay. There's, there's, there's still, there's still, um, there's still more opportunities. You know, that was just a shop check. That wasn't a mismap. They, like, they've got the full map at this point. They can see where the exit is. This is just a, I am four zones ahead, and I am going to look for absolutely anything that improves, that, like, even minimally improves my chances of winning this run. There's some Infernal Torch value. Bust and open that crate. Let's go. Nice heal spell to tank the, uh, Electro Balls there. Oh, Titanium Shield is gone, though. It can one hit too many. Uh, Condor Seeds, I believe it, it's a pretty short list. It just bans Axes and Boots of Leaping. I, uh, and I believe that's it. Is Lunging Man... I, I wasn't sure if Lunging was explicitly banned. Um, it's been reworked in Synchrony such that it's not... You can't just find it randomly. Like, you can't conjure or transmog into it. And it's not in Lock Shops. Like, the only way to get it is to sell, like, an entire, like, sell a full build to the pawnbroker. Oh, it is in Lock Shops? Okay. My bad. I thought, I thought it was reserved, like, I thought it was, like, one of those pawnbroker-only things.
All right, pretty clean Dead Ringer fight from RC, which is you know, one of the last potential tripping points for a build this stacked. At this point, it's pretty much just about keeping Dorian alive in this fight. And with the uh, big stack of bombs and the blood drum for the early free hit, Marcy should not have too much trouble ending this fight quickly and keeping Dorian safe. Two hits already down, two thirds of the way in. Two HP remaining. Oh, getting frozen there. And nice lures. Final hit for Marcy coming in here. And Marcy gonna be taking that game one. Going up. 1-0. Yeah, axes are the only move attack weapon that are that is also AoE. Which, when you think about that concept, it's kind of busted. <laughs> like, it really is incredible at the high level how often, if you find a decent axe, you can just kind of push buttons leading into the exit room and the whole thing just melts. And it gets even more ridiculous if you factor in things like Ring of Ring of Piercing or Ring of War. A Ring of Ax uh, Ring of War Axe is honestly like one of one of the really, really terribly strong synergies. And it's pretty easy to get with a with a shrine that shows up semi consistently dropping it on top of it also being available out of purple chests. Yeah, Curd Shovel, back when it could dig t uh, Tier 2 walls, it was also horrifically broken, and it was banned in previous seasons before it, before it got nerfed. Yeah, we've I think we've seen, like, literal... like, sub-six runs in Condor races that were just like, yep, the speed, the seed spat out a blood axe and a ring of war and like some armor like a ch like chainmail and like that's it and then the and then the seeds done in five in like five and a half minutes is there any way to fa fix axes not really not without fully like really fundamentally working how they were uh, like reworking them the the fact that a um that you get both move attack and AoE is just fundamentally too strong. Speaking of move attack, though, we do have a gold cat to start here out of this bloodshot. We use attracted dagger range, then it's absolutely awful, completely unusable. Like I'm not, I'm not even exaggerating. Like that, that, that fix it. That uh, change has been proposed. Like just making the close range attack a melee pushback, like Eli's shove. And I can already tell you, without even testing it, it would be completely unusable. You would just randomly die, all the time, because like you would get into a situation where the enemy in front of you has another enemy behind it, and there's just nothing you can do. Like, the, the best proposal I've been able to come up with, and I'm not even super crazy about it myself, is to bring about the death of the, the axe is not a broadsword memes, and make the axe just be a standing broadsword range attack, and only move attack if, if the three tiles horizontally in front, directly in front of the player are clear. Just give it some snag so it doesn't have perfect maneuverability. And even then, I don't like that too much because I feel like one of the um, you know that one of the axes down like only downsides is that it is tricky to learn how to use with its blind spots on its uh, on the immediate diagonals, and so you're kind of taking that out with that. 
in exchange for for some snags. Is that the trident? No, though. No, not at all. Trident does. Trident also does not hit diagonals. Trident has exactly identical attack range to the current axe. Well, not exactly the same. The trident uh, has diagonal attack angle on the uh, on its fringe ranges, whereas Axe just attacks in the direction you're pushing. But yeah, like the, it, it's it's the it's the combination of the three factors that makes Axe so busted. It's it's move attack, it's AOE, and it has perfect maneuverability. You never snag on enemies. Like you do with like war hammers, broadswords, or even like long swords and spears. You don't snag. You only stop moving if there is an enemy directly blocking you. Anyway. <laughs> Enough talking about axes, which aren't even in the in this run because we're playing with Gondor mod where they're banned. Uh, we have seen quite a bit of a build establishment here. We've got uh, throwing charms for both runners. Lake Hope's still running the glass, uh, the gold cat, excuse me, with the gold ring. Interesting synergy. It does mean that you get to move attack, um, and as long as you chain kills together, you will keep dealing infinite damage. It's a very strong build, but it can be kind of. Um, I guess kind of, you can call it big brain. It does take a lot of um, mental focus to really uh, utilize to its full potential. And if you're not on top of it, you and you and you push in too aggressively with that infinite damage setup, and then get yourself into a situation where you can't get the kills, and you're um, and you're just dealing one damage again, it can get real ugly real fast. Interesting choice from Lake Hope there. Uh, finding the glass shop and ignoring it, not using that transmute uh, tome. Does find this uh, titanium cat though. Can I ignore the berserk spell? Marcy running the titanium spear. A little bit of a lead here. Um, oh, this swarm's a little nasty, but it looks like Marcy's got under control. Gonna pop a gigantism scroll just to keep it a little safe. Up the damage output a bit. Yeah, I'm not sure. I I don't really like like Hope's farming decisions on that floor beyond picking up the titanium cat. Um, like there's, yeah, there's this trans uh transit like, um, there's a transient scroll here. Like you may as well, if you're just gonna leave it on the ground, you may as well transmute that gold trident to see if it's anything worthwhile. But I feel like a, like that transmute tome represented a lot of value, and Lake Hope just kind of declined to take any opportunities to pursue that value. Um, gotta make sure you're using transmute. It's a very under um, undervalued spell, I think, for a lot of speedrunners. And when you see like an entire shop that you're just going to ignore, that's the perfect target for it. Um, Marcy here, though, on to zone four. And yeah, honestly, I think, uh, well, Marcy does have more tankiness with that ring of regen, but the titanium cat is so much better of a weapon than, than the titanium spear. The titanium spear, no move attack, um, no AoE. It's just going to be really hard to push with any amount of aggression into denser swarms. That said, uh, Marcy making good use of it. Nice use of the Goblin Bomber there. I'm not sure if that was intentional, but we can we can say it was. It makes them look cooler. Um, yeah, Ring of Regen just gonna patch up the da damage from that uh, from that bomb anyway. So may as well just tank it. Let it clear out. Let it clear the way. Good use of the uh, blood pulses there to clear those Blade Masters out. Ooh, good, good utilization of the throw charm there to just take out the sarcophagus and leave. 
And Marcy gonna blood drum for a quick kill here. Gonna leave the trine behind. Yeah, Lake Hope. Yeah, while I like Lake Hope's build better in as things currently are, uh, just to, off of the back of the, what I think is a much better weapon alone, um, Lake Hope's gotta push this a little harder than they are right now. If they want to catch up and close this gap. Because Marcy is... Quite a ways ahead. And the opportunities for Lake Hope to catch up are dwindling as time goes on. It's a full zone lead here. Lake Hope now out of those cookies. And, yeah, now it's, uh, the gap widens even further. At this point, Lake Hope, um, yeah, I, th I think Lake Hope is shifting into safe play safety play. I think that's reasonable. I don't think there's any way Lake Hope can put on pressure at this point. This is entirely just a, you're playing for, uh, to hope that you see an error from your opponent. And that, uh, like, Dorian takes a death here. Looks like the looks like Marcy did lose their potion. I believe they had a potion at one point. Oh well, Dorian taking two clubs immediately at the start of the Necrodancer fight is that is the sort of error I was talking about Lake Hope needing here. Well, that said, only one hit left to go, and yeah, here it is. So Marcy is going to, after a little bit of a rough start with that ogre, Marcy is going to take game one here. Or, um, or game two here, rather, sorry. Getting ready for round three here. All right, countdown is on. We will be seeing Marcy and just to take the clean 3-0 sweep here, or Flake Hope can answer back with a point on the board. So far, these races have been pretty close. All right, game three. 
a trap room here, and we've got a potential blood shop in the first room here. I hope gonna bomb their way in, and it has nothing particularly noteworthy. Marcy gonna go for the kill, gets a good favorable teleport, and will be fighting probably for this titanium bronze sword. Oh, and then is an obsidian cat in the room right next to the start. And I think we're gonna see both runners uh, taking this obsidian cat. Marcy does get the, uh... Ooh, that's... Probably don't want that. Raw Ring of Shadows with no mapping is a little bit on the sketchy side. Marcy getting up this exit room and gonna be falling behind to one two as Lake Hope starts one three. So Marcy does have the advantage of that blood drum and the glass slippers. Both of which can be fairly handy in the long run. The glass slippers, though, pretty hard pretty hard to keep alive. So not sure how long we'll see those for. With this blood drum, though, Marcy is going to be able to check this lock shop and find some obsidian armor. Always good to have a little bit of defense. That said, Lake Hope um, does have a plate armor that, that just popped up out of nowhere, so... Um, oh, ow, ow, ouch, Lake Hope. Taking a dragon stomp there. Just a little bit of a misorder on that uh, on that fight there. Uh, but Marcy also kind of feeling a little ouch right now. Down to half a heart. Has this dragon approaching. No, le no multiplier on this obsidian cat. And that's going to be a problem. As we see right there. But Marcy, I think on the run back. I think you... Oh, no. Nope, going to bomb back into the blood shop. Like... I don't know that it's worth it at this point. Like, you're spending 30 seconds a uh, while behind for glass slippers and blood drum? I, I don't think that's worthwhile. I think it's better to just save the bomb here. And, all right. Gonna go for the kill again, though. But this is allowing Lake Hope a good opportunity to establish a, a big build while they're in the lead. And um, just get even further ahead. Well, that said, Lake Hope taking a little bit of a hit there. Taking a little, another little bit of a hit there. Oh, and that's, um, that was a risky Earth. When you, or I believe when you Earth crates, if they contain enemies, um... If you're like, if you do it like that, they'll just hit you almost immediately. Gotta be very, uh, excuse me, very careful about that. Okay, there's some holy water though. That's gonna be able to provide some healing. Might even just pop it at the start of this next floor, just off of the mush. Oh wait, no, that was that was two three. Okay, never mind. Could pop it on the uh, zombies here though for a nice full heal. Yeah, there we go. Just gonna use it on two zombies, get the two heart heal, go back up to full. And Lake Hope with the plate armor, obsidian cat, and earth spell. Looking pretty good here. Checking the purple chest. Finds a scroll of need, which I believe will grant a random torch in this situation. But could hold it to try and set up for a free potion. Not too hard to do with that earth spell. Um, with a blood cost of half a heart, you can just blood magic yourself down to half a heart. Probably want to avoid, uh, hold off on doing that until you find some food, though, to heal up after grabbing the potion. And Marcy, though, after the rough start, though, still looking to put some pressure on. Getting some decent, uh, pace out of this zone one now. Oh, some na nasty slip and slides for Lake Hope here. Gets it all sorted out. Ooh, good Earth spell from Lake Hope there. That was getting to be a little bit of a sketchy situation. All right. Oh, 
there was an enemy in that crate. <laughs> Yeah, like, I've just gotta, gotta be a little careful, though. Um, they've got good armor and some a little bit of extra max health, but, uh... By no means indestructible here. They keep taking these little chip damage hits, they're gonna find themselves in trouble pretty soon. Blood Broadsword, definitely not what you're looking for here. And it's a one-zone difference. Marcy has closed the gap a bit. Oh! A little bit of a mishap from Lake Hope there, immediately dropping the Flawless on Death Metal. Not what you want to be doing at this uh, at this stage of the run. Honestly, down to two hearts, this is where I'm really considering just blood earthing myself down to half a heart and popping for the potion. Oh, well, okay, you can, never mind, you can just, uh, you can just, you, you can just earth the urn. Okay, getting the kills on the enemies. I think Lake Hope has just forgotten to have the Earth spell, or maybe it just doesn't want to spend the heart. Okay, it doesn't want to spend the half heart. I think that's reasonable. All right, find some cookies and obsidian cutlass. All right. And um, also Pulse Spell. Pretty nice offensive spell. Oh, these Blade Masters, uh, yeah, this is where this is a situation where the, this Pulse Spell would be handy. One of the most uh, most like always useful um, applications for an, an an offensive spell like Pulse or Earth is just to deal with those pesky Blade Masters that love to just um, tangle things up. And that is a ring of gold out of the Shrine of Uncertainty. And Lake Hope's gotta, gotta kinda start actually running here. Uh, Marcy has caught up. This is, They are on the same, he is on the same floor as Lake Hope here. This is uh, suddenly quite close. Because Lake Hope's been kind of, um, kind of dawdling around a little bit, and not really finding any improvement to the build, so Marcy pushing with almost the same build. Oh, but Marcy gets fire-pigged! Oh, but this is a nasty swarm for like a- okay, good. Handle on the blue dragon. Yeah, Lake Hope, I think, just backing off just enough to get this all under control. Health is getting a little low for Lake Hope, though. Again, I, I... I still think it might be worth considering just... dropping down to the half a heart and grabbing the potion at this point. Easy Earth Kill on Korif. Finds Fireball uh, spell, just gonna uh, leave it behind. Stick with the Pulse and the Earth. Not even checking the shop. I'm wondering if uh, maybe not screen watching. Doesn't know that Marcy is all the way back in zone one. Because a little bit of healing for Lake Hope here would go a long way. Even just like an apple or a carrot would really help quite a bit. Down to a heart and a half, like I, I know, I know, I probably sound like a broken record at, here at this point, but this is absolutely the time to just get the potion online right now and make sure that even if something bad happens, you've got the extra life. All right, coming into Dead Ringer, still holding on to that uh, onto that scroll of need, but I think is making the right play. Okay, going for the Earth Kill. <laughs> Dead Ringer getting stuck in that little in that little closet. All right, all right.
Oh, but they don't have bombs. They're having to do bot puzzles, and they're still not popping for the potion. This could cause some problems if things go awry. Okay. We do have two bombs, so... Does enable... Oh, I don't like this. I don't like this. Please deal with the red dragon. Oh my goodness. This is... <coughs> oh my goodness. Okay, there we go. Pop popping for the potion. I'm better late than never, I suppose. Oh my goodness, I like... <laughs> when, when that red dragon fireball came in, I like just about died in real life. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Alright, but Lake Hope. Lake Hope, playing with all our hearts a little bit. <laughs> but does deliver the, the finish line. And comes up... One and two in this set.